Hi and welcome back to my channel. Previously I was rebuilding my ZX6R and finally I got to the point where I'm starting to build the carbon fiber parts for my motorcycle to finish up my build. This is going to be the most labor consuming part and I'm going to start with the front mudguard. I will start with making the barriers. I am using masking tape to make the lines around the fender for the barrier. It's going to be the three piece mold. If you look at an ABS plastic part, you can see a split line where the factory had their mold split originally and this can give you a guideline whenever you are making mold of the part. These little pieces of fluted signboards give me extra support for the flanges which will overhang the sides of the pattern. I made my glue gun extra hot so after I squeeze the glue around it I would have enough time to put the flanges on. It was super tricky to build the flanges for the top part of the mold. I added extra supports where it was needed. It looks a bit dodgy but it does the job well. I already built the flanges for the second part of the mold even though I will get to this part later. I just screwed three pieces of wood together to make a base support for my fender. I use some foil tape to smooth out the barriers on the side. It will help me to have it even where the fluid board joints meet. I use beeswax to cover up the holes and edges. The excess I just scrape off with either my finger or some wooden ice cream stick. Anything really as long as you get the job done. I used a wooden knife because this was the only thing in my local stationery shop. These little beeswax pyramid shapes help the two parts of the mold join together and keep it in the right place. This step is quite important. started applying the chemical release agent for this job. I am using Easy Composites chemical release agent. I found it a very good product and I still stand by it. But because I bought the liter size I did not use it up as quick as I planned to. It does not work as well as it should and you will see this later in the video. The mold stuck to the fender. I usually use 5-6 coats with 15 minutes of drying time between each coat depending on the temperature of the room. It could take longer. After it's done I use Easy Composites high temperature gel coat. Roughly 160 grams and this is enough for two layers of thick gel coat. The first layer will be 80 grams and the second layer also will be 80 grams. When I say 160 grams, I am only talking about the gel coat weight without the hardener. I mix the two components together very well and with a small brush applying it, starting with the edges. The reason I'm using a small brush is that I want to break the surface tension and I don't want to trap any air bubbles under the gel coat. The small air bubble can give you a hard time after you pull the mold apart and you see a small air pocket. So definitely get into the corners and edges with a small brush. I skipped a long part of laminating the fiberglass because the location was not suitable for filming. I am sorry about that, but I promise I will make a video shortly about fiberglass laminating. 
Just quickly, I want to add that I did use a coupling coat and tooling resin. With the coupling coat, I used 35 gram glass tissue and the 100 gram chop strand mat. With the tooling resin, I used 300 gram and 400 gram chop strand mat. Now I can start the side mold. Took off the unwanted fluid board barriers and scraped out the beeswax from the corners. After the six coats of release agent, I started applying the two layers of gel coat. Then I laminated the fiberglass the same way at the top. I trimmed around with an angle grinder using a suitable disc for stone. Before I split in the mold, I drilled a few holes where the bolts and nuts would join the pieces together. I am using a metal drill bit for this. As you can see, the top part came out really nicely. This is where I start having problems. The side mold has stuck to the part and has pulled some paint off. I thought I did not put enough release agent on, but actually, the release agent was expired. But at this time, I had not known that. I used the mold cleaner from Easy Composites to get the paint off the mold. It was quite tough and had to rub it really hard to get it off. I could have used the sandpaper, but I didn't. After a couple of coats of release agent, I started laying down the masking tape to get the template of the size of the mold. I will use this template to cut out the right size of the carbon fiber. I am using a pre-preg from Easy Composites. It's an XC130 210 gram twill 3K and I'm using a 400 gram twill 12K pre-preg. I will apply three layers of the 210 gram and two layers of the 450 gram carbon fiber.
ideal to use a good quality scissors to cut out the shapes. Makes your life easier. I am laying down the first layer as a mosaic pattern. The idea was to create something that looks different. I really like the way it gives you a forged carbon fiber look. The whole bike will have this look. I just roughly cut out the pieces and lay them down in a way that the weaves are all facing different directions from each other. In the video it looks easy and quick, but trust me it took ages to complete. I start laying down the first continuous layer of 210 gram carbon fiber and then following a debulking process. Which means I have put a perforated release film over the carbon fiber. After I put it in a vacuum bag and put it under negative pressure minimum 20 minutes. I did the side pieces already and they got into the back together. Then I take it all out of the bag and continue laying down the carbon fiber, starting with the 450 gram this time, one layer of that. Next put on the side mold pieces and boil them together, after that I am putting 210 gram carbon fiber over the joints, finishing up with a layer of 450 gram prepreg. Then I place the unperforated release film over the carbon fiber, holding it in place with the masking tape. I've wrapped the whole thing up into a briefer cloth, then place the whole part into a fresh vacuum bag for curing. I did not record the baking process but it took me almost a whole day. I started the curing on 60 degrees for 4 hours, 70 degrees for 2 hours, then ramped up the temperature to 120 degrees for 2 hours. Then switched it off and let it cool in the oven. If you would like to know where I got my oven from, I also have a video on my channel on how I made the oven and the link is in the upper right corner. But you can also find it in the description below. This is the point where all my work goes out of the window. Realized something was wrong with the release agent 
and the whole part was stuck into the mold. I had to put the part into the freezer for a couple of days. So the mold shrunk, but the carbon fiber did not, and this helped me to break it out of the mold. I was pretty annoyed here, so I switched off the camera. Plenty of jackals was ripped out by the part. The mold is not usable or repairable either, so it goes into the bin. I am going to try to repair the carbon fiber to save as much as I can from the project. I am using a razor blade to crack off the stuck jackals and doing this piece by piece. It looks dangerous and it is dangerous and make sure you use a protective glove if you ever have to do it. I did not use a glove because the skin on my hands is as tough as a rhino's ass. I start sanding it with a 600 grit wet sandpaper and I sand it until the jacko disappears from the part. Unfortunately, I had to sand into the carbon fiber a little bit. You can see the black water drops on the paper, that is carbon. It was not ideal, but I had to get the jar coat off. Off camera, rinse the part off with soapy water and wiped it through with acetone. Then I am using MIPA P67S polyester based two component body filler which has an outstanding filling properties for composites. Perfect stuff to fill pinholes and to level surfaces. It has a quick drying time and it is designed to use with a spray gun, but I just brushed it on. It looks green, but it won't be after curing. After fully cured, I sand it down with a wet sandpaper until the surface got leveled. Then I washed the whole thing with soapy water, wiped it down with acetone and applied another layer of MIPA. Then guess what, I sand it down again, washed it with soapy water and wiped it through with acetone. For clear coating, I used a MIPA product, it's called MIPA 2K HS Carbon Lacure. For all the products I am using in this video, you can find a link below in the description. I know the environment for the spraying is not ideal, so I would like to grab this opportunity right now and ask you to subscribe, like, so I can build a paint booth out of this creepy room and I can knock out some better quality content for you. The walls have to be resurfaced, I'll probably use plaster for that. An extraction system must be fitted and the floor needs some concrete as well. So I would really appreciate your support. Anyway, back to the fender now. I sprayed three layers of clear coat in total. After that, I sanded down and with 2500 grit paper to smooth out the orange peel or any dirt stuck on the surface.
Here I am using a fast cutting polishing compound with a foam pad. Then I wiped it down with a microfiberless cloth. Finished it off with a fine polish and finally wiped it off again with a microfiberless cloth. I'm going to compare the weights just to see the difference, although the weight difference won't be as much as you would expect. The clear coat and the filler did bulk up the weight. I sprayed on about 170 gram clear lacquer and still there is roughly 30 gram polyester filler left on it. If the part comes out with no issues, I could possibly have saved a good amount of weight. We'll see that in another video. I am pretty happy with how it turned out despite how it started. In my opinion the forged pre prag pattern looks great and I can't wait to have the whole bike look like this. Big shout out to you if you made it all the way to the end of the video. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video please subscribe and hit the like button. See you in the next one.